I'm JWD Napic, and welcome to the final video in the SEL Secure Communication video series. In this video, we're going to be bringing it all together and showing how event collection, user access permissions, and reporting of activities within the system are viewed, used, and consumed. In order to do this, we will be accessing the Accelerator QuickSet software into that connection directory that we've been using all along. The first step that we want to do is come into the 3620, right-click on it, and manually connect into this. If you recall, we were using the usernames of engineer and technician for our access. We will first be looking at the engineer user and logging in with him. We will see down at the bottom of the screen that the information for the access script has populated, as well as the device being connected has been successful. We can open up the terminal screen and also see the ID command being issued for this device, even though the 3620 does not respond to that. We can, however, use the command of who in order to see what devices we have access to. If you recall, the engineer was given access to all of the relays on all of the access levels for each of the devices. We can now select the 451 by typing SEL space 3, and the 3620 will script us through and connect straight into the 451. You will see the equal sign prompt response when you're successfully in the 451. You can type ID command here and see that the 451 responds properly. We can also type the 2AC command directly, and the relay will take us directly up to the 2AC level. Note that I did not have to type in any of the passwords, nor did I have to go through access level one to get here. This is a wonderful feature of the 3620 in that it is managing the permission levels for that user and will not allow access to areas where that person does not have permission. I will be quitting out of this device and disconnecting from the 3620. Right-clicking and click disconnect. I will now demonstrate the 351S connection process. We can right-click on the 351S directly, click connect, and in this case, we'll be using the technician username. If you recall, we gave them limited access to the 351S and see how the system responds to that. Again, you will see the connecting bar and information of how the system is progressing down in the bottom half of your screen. Once we are connected, we will see that we have successfully connected down here. We will also see that the green lights have been illuminated for each of the devices that have successfully been connected to or through in this process. We will pull back up the terminal screen and see that we are directly into the 351S already. We do have limited permissions for this user, but we will type in the ACC command and be given access to level one. However, we did not give the technician access to the 2AC level. When typing in the command, we will be given the password prompt in order for them to attempt a password. Once we enable the password management randomizing feature of the 3620, the technician will not be able to simply type in the password. He will not know it. However, there will be some reports that I'll be showing you that you can get those passwords in the case of an emergency. Exit out of the device and disconnect from the system. Next, I will be showing you the event collection for the 351S. We can open up the device, right click on it, come to the view events, and we will be presented with the 351S events that have already been collected through the 3530. We could double click on this device, have it open up, and show what has happened within this device. Fortunately, this was just a trigger, so there's nothing interesting to see here. Closing out of those windows, we will move to the 3620 web interface, where we can log in and see the reports of activity and view the password management features of the 3620. We will begin by going to the password management feature under the security header. In this password management screen, we will be able to enable the scheduler, change the passwords now, or revert passwords, or manually define passwords for specific devices. In this case, we are going to be generating the passwords now in order to attempt a manual password change. Before you do a password change, make sure that you are able to connect to all of the devices manually through the QuickSet connection directory. Once the password generation is complete, we will be able to go down to our proxy reports and generate and create proxy reports for what our passwords are going to be. We will also be able to generate a report for commands and devices that was used during our engineering access session. The begin date and end date can be used to specify very tight windows. However, in this case, I'm using a very large window. Once generated, we'll be able to download the PDF 
and view what commands were used in our devices. We will see that we have a list of the 351S, 3530, and 451 devices. We will be able to see what commands and which user issued those commands for each user and a timestamp associated with them. We will also be able to see the managed passwords when we download the managed device password list to see what the proposed passwords are for our system at each access level. Recall that the 451 is an older 451 and we are limited to the six character set. These reports, as well as the events that are automatically collected and stored, provide you quick and easy reporting for federal regulation audits. This concludes this video. In this series, we learned how to configure the SEL Secure Communications solution to provide you access into your relays for engineers, technicians, as well as event collection for the team software. The SEL Secure Communication system provides a robust and easy to use solution for federal regulation compliance. For more information on this system and the products involved, please visit our website, www.selinc.com. Thank you for watching.